Hi there, this is Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks. Um, I get emails from all over the world for people inquiring about Nautilus models and model building and RC submarines, but one of the most common topics as it pertains to the Nautilus and the Nautilus assembly is how I get the paint finishes on my models. Uh, it's something that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, it turns out really well. It's been uh, a few years for me to develop uh, what I like to do with it, but what I thought I would do for this video is show you how I do it. So you'll see all of the intricate secrets. Uh, it's a multi-step, multi-stage process, but uh, it's fairly simple. I think anybody can probably handle it. So what you are going to need will be the following. Your model. Now I've got uh, most of the assembly done. I've got the windows and floodlights uh, masked off with masking tape. Uh, I have the LEDs installed already. Uh, hatches are all installed and functional. This particular model is going to be a waterline build, which is why there's no lower half to it. Typically I would be doing this as the model would be entirely built. So what you're going to need, um, this model has already been painted with the base coat and what I used, uh, but you can use almost anything, is this Rust-Oleum Universal uh, Silver Paint and Primer in one. Um, I like it because it dries quickly, goes on easily, uh, and it's got a fairly large metallic flake to it. Uh, and now it might not look particularly good at this point, uh, at the first stages, but what that actually does is it casts a lot of reflective light that shines through the subsequent layers that we're going to be putting on uh, and it looks pretty good. But having said that, you can use any paint. Um, again, I like silver because it does give a, a, a ring of a metallic um, you know, undertone to the paint once you get it done, but if you like a more you know, bronzy or gold colored finish, you can certainly do that. Um, silver works really well though because it contrasts with the next step uh, and also with the rust. So that's the first layer. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to be airbrushing with uh, Floquil paints. That's what again what I use. Grimy black or weathered black. Uh, I really can't tell the difference. There must be a fairly subtle difference between the two, but grimy black or weathered black from Floquil. That's what we're going to use to highlight all of the panel lines on the model. Uh, of course, the other thing that you're going to need uh, will be uh, an airbrush. I use a, a patch talon, double action, but you can use a single action as well. Single action is uh, uh, cheaper, obviously. Double action, uh, air and paint are on kind of two different controls, so you've got a lot of control over it. And what I'll do after we highlight all the panels, we're going to dust the model with a, a flat, clear lacquer, just to give the rust something to adhere to. And then we're going to finish up with the, the secret formula, uh, Modern Masters Metal Effects Iron Paint. Uh, now this comes in uh, six ounce jars, which is what I like to get because it does dry up on you after you open it. Uh, comes in the, I believe, the uh, 16 ounce containers as well, which is going to be enough to probably do a large portion of your house. That's going to be too much. Get the smaller packages, they um, will last you better. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is a little bit of vinegar. That actually activates the iron paint, that actually um, causes the corrosion. This iron paint is actually metal flakes embedded in a, in a suspension. So what we're going to be creating here is real rust. And uh, it looks great because there's all of the subtle variations in color and uh, pooling. And it really makes the model look really realistic. But vinegar is what we're going to use to activate it. Um, you can get the activator from Modern Masters. I wouldn't spend the money. Vinegar works perfectly fine. And the last thing that we're going to need is gloss clear lacquer, and that's what's going to um, give that illusion of a, of a, of a wet boat uh, that's you know, still corroded and everything, but you'll see how we progress. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you from start to finish uh, what we did. Alright, as you can see I've got my 
paintbrush set up. I've got my paint inside, that grimy black by Floquil. Now what I'm going to do is uh, highlight all of the creases and panel lines in the model and uh, by the end it's going to look a little bit like a zebra but uh, as you'll see in later steps it, it actually all kind of uh, works out in the end so just follow the contours of the model Don't worry about being exactly precise. Um, this is a, you know, a, a really weathering, and weathering is not precise by any stretch of the imagination. So what we're really going for here is, is uh, variations in the hull color. I think you can see now what I've been talking about. You know, the um, actual process did not take that long as you uh, can see there. So what we've got here are some, the center of the panels are more exposed of a metallic color and all of the panel lines where all the rivets are, which areas, you know, that would tend to collect corrosion and algae and other things like that uh, are going to be darker. So. Again, it's a nice variated color to the hull of the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up by uh, doing the other side and then we'll move on to the following step. Alright, as you can see I have uh, highlighted all of the panel lines. It's kind of a grungy, grayish, black color uh, right now. You can see the different color variations uh, in the hull. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to take a little bit of the gloss finish off of the silver. Um, I actually use a lot of sprays just from your local hardware store. They work great. Uh, this is a Krylon matte finish. So all I want to do here, because the black is already matte, I really just want to give this a really, really light dusting. Just on the whole model. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to wait a few minutes. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to wait a few hours. I'm going to let this dry really well. And then we're going to move on to the fun part, which is the actual rust weathering. All right. <clears throat> the model has uh, dried now. Um, it is ready for the next step, which is the Modern Masters Metal Effects Iron Paint. Um, this particular jar that I have is uh, getting old and crusty, so I'm going to have to shake this up really well. But make sure you do that with yours as well. Uh, get it all emulsified with the, uh, you know, the suspension particles. But what you can see here this is a black paste. I'm going to scoop some out with my old, nasty, rusting brush that I keep on hand just for this. This actually smells like smoked oysters in a can. That's about the closest thing that I can, I can equate it to. So I can see I've got some in my little mixing container here. i got vinegar. Now, <clears throat> the ratio that you're going to mix it at is going to be dependent upon how rusty you want it. If you want it very rusty, just put in uh, a little bit of the vinegar uh, with the paste uh, until you get a liquidy solution. Spread it on and what you'll get is a very thick coat of rust in your model. 
you'll end up with a lot of, of uh, you know, pools of rust and, and a lot of really neat color variations. Um, what I recommend is about 50-50, roughly. So I'm going to pour in enough to make a 50% solution inside. And you can see I eyeballed it. Really, this is more of an art form than a science. Um, now I'm going to mix this up until it is completely emulsified. All the chunks and, and everything are out. What you're going to end up with is a, a very watery solution. And my test, my, my litmus test to see if this mixture is the right consistency is when I spread it on the side of the container, uh, it should be black. It, uh, it shouldn't run with clear spots or anything like that. So I've got it all mixed up here now. So um, the application is very, very simple. Start at the top, work your way down, uh, and basically slather it on. Just let it let it pool, let it drip all over. Um, there's going to be lots of runs and drips. Uh, you can see I've got a plastic drop cloth on underneath the model, and then uh, under the model itself, I've got a you know some shop towels. So like I said, just slather it on. Let it, let it drip, let it pool, let it do its natural thing. And again, this kind of mimics um, what would happen in, uh, in nature. the entire model in the rusting solution. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to uh, grab it. I'm just going to tip it up and let the uh, excess rusting solution kind of drip and flow back down and, and off the model just so that there's no big puddles of it. Again, certainly not an issue if it does, but um, this just kind of saves a, a little bit more of the, of the cleanup from the next step. So that's the model covered in rusting solution. Uh, what we are going to do now at this point is uh, I'm just going to make sure that there's no air bubbles trapped here anywhere. The other thing to watch out for are bristles from your brush. Sometimes those do come off as well. Like right there. Anywhere that there's a heavy concentration of rust, you can just quickly hit with your brush, pull it all away. Alright, I'm going to stop messing around with this. It's nice to just leave it do its thing. Clean up my paintbrushes. Now the uh, hard part, of course, is waiting for it to uh, do its thing. What we'll do is uh, leave it to corrode, basically. Uh, we'll come back a couple of times, give you a snapshot of the process as it goes, and uh, then likely what we'll end up doing is come back um, either later tonight or tomorrow to move on to the next step. Here is just a quick update on the uh, active corrosion that's going on on this Nautilus model. It's been about an hour uh, and you can see that the uh, corrosion is taking place rather quickly. Still got some wet areas uh, on the horizontal surfaces and in the uh, wells for the dive planes. Um, but this area here is starting to dry nicely. What you'll see is these really dark red areas will uh, turn a, a much lighter shade of orange and then in the uh, creases uh, we'll get our you know reds and umber colors. 
So uh, it's coming along nicely. Uh, kind of looks like a rusty mess now, and it's certainly not going to get any better as the uh, rusting continues. But as you'll see, this is all part of the process. All right, here's the model at about four hours of uh, time. You can see all of these wonderful, you know, the bright oranges and the deep reds, uh, kind of in a striated pattern all down the length of the uh, model. I'm going to let it cure overnight, uh, get the last of the moisture uh, out of the rusting solution. Uh, and then tomorrow morning what we'll do is the next phase, which is going to involve wiping it down, uh, exposing some of that metallic panel again, and uh, hitting it with a little bit of clear to really make it pop. All right, it is about six o'clock in the morning, the day after the application of our rust effect. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to remove some of the rust that we put on the model. And we're going to do that by using uh, just a, a soft shop cloth. Uh, you can use a, you know, a rag or anything else that you have. And the trick to this is to wipe in a downward motion. And we're just going to use gentle pressure and wipe downward all along the hull. And what this does is it gets rid of you know some of the you know the larger sort of gross um, uh, you know formations of rust and it uh, it really smooths things out makes it uh, a lot more subtle now you know right now it must look you know more like all we're doing is is uh, you know removing all of the rust that we put on there earlier um, but what we're going to do is we're going to dust it off after we are all done and you'll see that you know the the rust is still there in um, in the nooks and crannies of the model but it was slightly removed in the center sections and, and again what that does is it exposes that nice metallic sheen of the silver beneath which is why we uh, you know elected to go with that uh, large metallic flake paint so what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep working on this and uh, check back in a few minutes. Alright, it's been uh, just a few minutes. I've had a chance to go over the entire model. Uh, and like I said, really the point of this is to try and remove the, the sheen of the dried rust from as much of the model as possible. Get the center sections of the panels exposed. So this is what it looks like after that step has been complete you can see that in the lower areas you know especially you know in here by the propeller the rust is still fairly thick and that's good you know you want some nice color variations uh, in the model make it look really natural so the next step I'm going to dust it off and we're going to hit it with a little bit of gloss clear so <clears throat> What I'm going to use now is, uh, and this is just simply because I, I have about a case of this, is uh, some Testers High Gloss Clear Lacquer. I've had this uh, all shaped up and we're ready to go. I really don't like the nozzles in this, but what uh, it, it comes out in an unsteady pattern. Uh, but actually for this application, that's exactly what we want. We want sort of a random uh, variation of sheen we really don't want to hose the whole thing down with gloss and have it, you know, a, a, a glossy, lacquered look to it. So um, I'm going to come around the other side, and what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to start at the tail section. I'm just going to give it some sprays, just random, just hit it on and off. And now what I'm going to look for are areas that look dry, the, the, especially the, the areas where the rust is thickest. 
I'm going to hit that with just a little bit more. Now the, the lacquer is actually going to soak into the model where that rust is. Um, and it, it'll dry in a, in a different sheen as well. So. That looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry here for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, I'll give you a look at, uh, at how it's going to look at the end. But you can see now that this is really close to what we're going to be getting for a, a final look of the model. And what you've got are uh, huge variations in colors center sections you've got some silver shining through with almost a, a green tinge you got rust in the in nooks and crannies <clears throat> in the panel lines you've got dark variations uh, as well and then again you've got that bit of a, of a gloss sheen to the model very reminiscent of uh, you know a, a submarine that is uh, used in the wet all right, the gloss clear is now dry. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to move on to just a little bit of the weathering. And what I like to use for these is, uh, is uh, pastels. Um, I got a, uh, a ground up pastel kit and they come in different colors. You can see I've got a grungy gray and a desert sand. Those are the two colors that I'll be using. Um, but these are all pre-ground, uh, nice and fine. But you can use just standard pastels from your local hobby store. Um, get a little bit of sandpaper, um, grind it all up there nice and fine. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a, a stiff bristled brush. Obviously, preferably use uh, one that you're not particularly attached to. And uh, I'm just going to do the, uh, the scuppers here. Um, just put it in there and, and drag it down. Now, less is more. Um, use just, just a little bit. Get it in the scuppers, drag it down. Um, initially, you're not going to be able to see a lot of it, but, but trust me, uh, you don't want to overdo this step. Uh, you don't want zebra stripes coming from out of your, your scuppers or, or any of the other places that you um, weather. So again just putting the brush in and uh, dragging it down. And really what this is doing is it's providing a uh, variation in sheen. So um, again going for subtle. Um, now again this, this is a multi-step process so this is the, the kind of the first stage to get a, a matte sheen coming from out of the scuppers here and dragging it straight down. Um, you probably can't see too much of that but now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to this uh, desert sand color which is a yellowy color and what I want to do on, uh, for this is I'm just going to go on the edges and I'm going to drag it downwards from the, the edges of the scuppers and this may be really hard to see on the camera again because what we're going for is subtle so from the left and right edges of the scuppers just dragging straight down and of course the purpose of the scuppers are to um, drain water from the area uh, between the hull and the deck. So typically underneath all of this would be hollow and the water would need a, a place to drain and that's the purpose of the scuppers. So what we've got here right now is just a really subtle streaking effect. You can use your finger to smear it down 
if you need to. Uh, another fun color to put on there uh, as well is uh, a little bit of green. This is a mildew green. It sounds wonderful. Uh, but you can use that sparingly as well and that helps to give uh, just a little bit of, of extra color. Again, I wouldn't overdo this at all, but uh, just a little bit of mildewy green coming from the, the scuppers here. So that's it for you know this um, area or what I would typically do uh, here. Again this is a waterline build so I'm not going to go into too much detail. The waterline on this model is actually designed to be right at this point uh, right underneath the deck but this is going to be a storm water line. There's going to be some huge waves washing over the deck. So I'm not going to go crazy again underneath the water line. But uh, on the top certainly I think we can add some more uh, detail. Just get it looking really good. I think what we'll do is we'll move on to that right now. One of my favorite colors in the Floquil line is called Grime. And this is Grime by Floquil. And what this is, is it's actually a, uh, a very watery solution. So it's not a solid color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to get a lot off. And I'm just going to... At the, at the corners here, I'm just going to streak downwards just to give a little bit of weathering to it. And again, you get too much, just use your finger, streak it down. You want this to be subtle. With, with weathering, it is all about subtle. And again, I do not pro profess by any stretch of the imagination to be a professional modeler. This is just what I've done, what I've learned over the course of the years with my build. This is, you know, what I, I think looks good. But what you want to do is find areas that would typically, you know, gather some grime and, and, and rust concentrate on those areas, you know, these upper edges are going to drain kind of downwards. Got some bolts here, we'll highlight a little bit, streak downwards, edges of the rakers. just like that. And you can, you can go through your whole model. Again, there is no right and there is no wrong to painting a Nautilus model. Uh, in the movie itself there were likely four or five different variations of color in the Nautilus ranging from flat black uh, all the way to the bright brass depending on the, the filming sequence so there's no right and wrong it's whatever you feel uh, looks best on the model don't be afraid to experiment uh, don't be afraid to do your own thing with it um, that's how we uh, do it here at the Nautilus Dry Docks um, enjoy your models uh, if you have any questions by all means feel free to give me a message anytime at bob at rc-sub.com. Uh, you can order these models uh, off of my other website, the nautilusdrydocks.com. So that's nautilusdrydocks.com. Uh, I got them in 16 inch and 31 inch and 66 inch lengths. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.